Welcome, Australian cricketers, to a 20-minute fitness session designed to hone your cricket-related skills and ability. As you athletes know, achieving components of fitness, which are a set of physical attributes, are vital and depend on the sport you play. As cricketers, the components of fitness you need to enhance are reaction time, strength, cardiovascular endurance and agility, but over all else, coordination. Coordination, put simply, is the ability to use different parts of the body together smoothly and efficiently. For the cricketer, hand-eye coordination plays a crucial role in virtually every aspect of the game, from the fielder taking a spectacular catch, to the bowler bowling a perfect Yorker, to the batsman hooking a bouncer from the tip of his nose to the top of the stand. Developing your coordination skills will directly refine your cricketing skills, allowing you to play the ball better, take more catches, field at a higher quality and bowl quicker and more consistently. To improve and then assess your coordination skills, we are going to go through a series of exercises and activities, then finish with the alternate hand wall toss test. Although it may seem basic, it will advance your coordination skills enough to get the edge over the opposition. Firstly, before participating in any activities, it is imperative that you warm up and stretch. Stretching minimises risk of injury, improves circulation and flexibility, as well as increasing the range of motion in joints, which are all helpful if you're playing cricket. Okay, that's the theory out of the way, now let's get into the prac. Set up cones 20 metres apart, and in groups of 4 to 6, do run-throughs, lunges, high knees or others. This will loosen your muscles up for stretching. This first stretch focuses on the calf complex. Start in this position, then walk up and put your heels flat on the ground. Remember, the more you push your stomach towards your calves, the bigger stretch you will get. Hold for 2 seconds, then repeat 5 times. Through this stretch, the hip complex is focused on. Starting in this position, push forward gently with your hips, so a light stretch is felt. Hold for 10 seconds, then repeat with the opposite leg. Starting in a similar position to the last stretch, try and touch your ankle with your elbow. You will feel a stretch in your upper hamstring. Hold for 2 seconds, then switch to this position to stretch your lower hamstring. Hold for 2 seconds again, then repeat the process 5 times for each leg. Increasing the flexibility around the hips is the focus of this next stretch. Laying flat on your back, simply bring one leg over the other, keeping your shoulders on the ground. Then do the same with the other leg. Repeat five times for each leg. This stretch focuses on increasing the range of motion in the hips and spine. Keeping your hips relaxed, gently rotate from side to side for 30 seconds. Focusing on getting the rotator cuffs in the shoulder warmed up, this stretch is simply done by rotating your forearms from a 90 degree angle to a 180 degree angle. Do this for 30 seconds. This stretch, which benefits bowlers especially, is designed to increase range of motion in the shoulder. Standing in a side on position with your front knee bent, simply move your arm in a bowling motion. Do this 10 times for each arm. The final stretch is simply rotating your arms in a circle, gradually getting bigger and bigger. This warms up and increases the range of motion in the shoulder. Do this for 30 seconds, then repeat going backwards. Now that we're warmed up, let's get into the exercises. The first exercise enhances your coordination skills immensely and is especially beneficial for the slips fielders and wicketkeeper. It is completed by one fielder throwing the ball to the right or left of the coach, depending if the coach is right-handed or left-handed who gets a slight touch on the ball so it flies to one of the fielders in the cordon. The fielder who catches the ball then proceeds to throw it back to the player who throws the ball to the coach. The process is repeated. Every 10 catches, the fielder who throws the ball is replaced by a first slip, the fielder closest to the wicket keeper. This is continued for 5 minutes at a high level of intensity. The second and final exercise is fun, because it involves diving catches. It is set up with the players taking turns to take diving catches onto the mat. Each player gets to take three diving catches in a row. After they have completed their three diving catches, the player who took the diving catch takes the player who threw the ball's place, while the player who threw the ball goes to the back of the line. 
This exercise is completed at a high level intensity for 5 minutes. Now it's time to see where you're at in terms of coordination skills through the alternate hand wall toss test. The alternate hand wall toss is very simple. From approximately 2 meters away, the ball is thrown against the wall from one hand, then caught in the other. You then throw it from that hand and catch it with the hand you started with. The process is repeated for 30 seconds. Each catch counts as one, so as athletes, we should be aiming for 35 plus. Good luck! So how'd you go? Did you meet, if not exceed, your hopes and expectations? Even you, being the elite cricketers you are, have room to improve. Work at your skills. As the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. Then get out there and make your country proud.